priority, um, we will be supporting it. Thank you. Madam Speaker. I call Greg O'Connor. Madam Speaker, uh, I uh, give me pleasure to rise and speak on these, uh, this bill. Um, a bill that really does, uh, I have to say, is, is I describe it as very pragmatic. Um, as I read through, particularly the three provisions, of course, with the uh, um, cover quite a range, but one of them that uh, does really resonate with me is the year and a day rule. Uh, it takes me back to a uh, time as a detective. I stood in an um, operating theatre uh, watching a young man who had been stabbed in the back of the brain, in fact, in his medulla oblongata, um, and watching surgeons working to save this young man's life. Um, and that was uh, obviously, if he, had he died, it would have been murder at the time. Um, but through some great work, heroic work actually by these surgeons over some length of time, um, this young man did survive, but uh, he didn't thrive. Um, and uh, I was to see that uh, young man um, over the next uh, several years, and he, he eventually did um, succumb to um, related um, injuries. And uh, as I read this, I sort of thought how um, really quite the, the, the person who, or the offender in that case, um, was uh, back on the street relatively quickly. Um, and I happen to know that the, he was involved in a, another very serious crime further down the track. So um, just to put some real, uh, I guess, some um, meat and bones, if you like, on, on this offending, um, just how absolutely essential it is. Of course, uh, we talk about um, modern medicine, um, and uh, we'll go back to uh, the, uh, the, the, the vital um, first few minutes, um, the golden minutes that occur um, after any offence, or after any, sorry, injury, and so on. If you are lucky enough to be injured, um, where you do have very good medical help available, um, then it is very likely that uh, you will survive. Um, but again, I go back uh, just how well you will survive or thrive. So um, with that modern medicine, of course, it brings us to the fact that many people who would previously have died um, will now linger. Um, and that death can occur um, anything, uh, well, we know, years later, um, that same injury. Um, albeit uh, given the ability of modern medicine to intervene um, families, but uh, that will be a debate for uh, certainly another bill that will come before this House. Um, so that is the year and the day, again, the most recent example, of course, being um, the very highly publicised uh, CTV building, um, the Christchurch earthquake. Um, again, um, I have to say a uh, situation I was very closely involved in there, and I was, uh, spent um, basically three weeks inside the red zones following that quake and saw the, uh, the human tragedy there, um, everything where there was only a trace of a body to actually um, full um, bodies being taken into the morgue. And uh, again, just the fact that those families now, um, closure will be so important part um, of what those families could hope to achieve from that disaster um, and what uh, better closure um, than for the person who, um, well, those the two people on that occasion, um, who quite clearly uh, took unacceptable shortcuts, um, and those two people um, will now not face what uh, what they should face. Um, some would argue that time cures all, but uh, that's. Uh, when I look at uh, just this week, um, the uh, person who was a the bookkeeper at Auschwitz um, was uh, cheated um, his day in court. Um, by dying early, but um, I don't think anyone would argue that uh, that uh, man shouldn't have faced his, um, that, uh, um, his consequences in court um, despite that length of time. So if you are responsible for a death, um, however long it should take um, for that death to occur, uh, of course you should face the consequences and not uh, be um, freed, if you like, by, um, the, by the fact that um, the year and the day was reached. So um, again, I certainly commend that, uh, that part of the bill, um, which of course is the uh, um, section 62, which uh, will be repealed. Um, moving on to section 123, um, which uh, contains the offence of blasphemous libel, um, another provision of the Crimes Amendment Bill, uh, which will be repealed. Um, not prosecuted in New Zealand since 1922, um, although um, 
just recently um, that uh, it's not it's not that particular case. Uh, blasphemous libel, but uh, I note um, Professor Lloyd Gearing uh, made 100 years um, very recently. Um, he was actually uh, um, prosecuted for heresy, um, which is a, a related offence. Um, I think the prosecution was withdrawn. Um, but it just um, takes us back to another era um, where the, um, the uh, let's say the role of the church and religion um, was rather more stringent, strong and relevant than it is today. Um, and even the mere fact that uh, such a statute is on our books um, just takes us back um, to another time. Um, I do note that um, the, uh, when the discussion was taking place last year, and um, when the um, Labor Party then opposition um, were um, very much in favour of this uh, bill or the um, bill being blasphemous libel being um, repealed. Um, there was some discussion then and the comments made by the bishops of New Zealand Anglican Church who said God did not need to be defended by a statute. Um, and also uh, the attention was drawn to the legislation last year after news reports that uh, British actor Stephen Fry was being investigated by Irish police um, on a complaint of blasphemy. Um, and uh, Mr Fry questioned why he, would that, why, he, why he should respect God when the world was so full of suffering. He, sorry, uh, questioned why he should respect God when the world was full of suffering. And uh, he was investigated by the Irish police. What it was, he said, uh, it's utterly, utterly evil. Why should I respect a capricious, mean-minded, stupid God who creates a world which is so full of injustice and pain? Um, that uh, investigation was dropped. Um, but again, um, it just goes to show that it's even today, um, and while we often look when we're talking about legislation here, we look at what overseas jurisdictions are doing. So it may well be we're ahead of several other jurisdictions on that. And I think I commend that uh, is another um, statute on our books um, that his time has well passed. And I certainly commend that um, to be repealed. Um, and I go to section 71.2, um, the other aspect of the bill, which protects spouses and civil union partners um, from um, essentially being uh, otherwise, we would be an accessory after the fact to an offence. And again, um, just while not um, precisely relating to this, um, there is, um, I used to uh, trained detectives at the uh, police college and uh, one of the ones that they always found that one of the tricky questions always was uh, was around spousal privilege um, again uh, that's which uh, still does exist um, in form on the statute books um, spousal privilege so again taking us back to another time um, and really what was behind that was the um, that a person's identity is not separate from their spouse um, that was un that's the, the provision that essentially underlies um, that uh, um, spousal privilege. And so related to that um, is the, um, of course, the, uh, this provision which we are looking at now, um, which uh, protects spouses and civil union partners in cases where they would otherwise be an accessory after the fact to an offence. Um, essentially, it's uh, really now we're um, time has come where it's an anomalous. Um, it creates an anomaly because it does not apply to other classes of people who are protecting someone in a close personal relationship. So um, while I, the uh, provision that I did mention in um, relation to spousal privilege, it's certainly related to that. Um, and there is really um, no reason why um, a spouse should receive the protection that they, or civil union partner, should receive the protection um, that they currently do, um, because a lot of these, um, uh, uh, often these provisions are used to hide behind. Um, they used, um, shall we say, uh, lawyers who know their business, who know their law, um, will often use these provisions um, to ensure that uh, the jury or even the judge don't get to hear the evidence that they should. So um, whatever um, a, a provision or any law that uh, presumes that a person's identity is not separate from their spouse. Um, I think Madam Speaker um, has had its day. 
So when I look at uh, this Crimes Amendment Bill, um, the three provisions which I've spoken of, um, I now believe uh, that uh, it would be hard to find anyone who would argue that all three provisions have not had their day. Um, I commend thank this you. bill to the House. Your time has expired. I call Simon O'Connor. Uh, Madam Speaker, I say this somewhat. Uh